I thought I asked for ice and tea. Well, we don't have any ice. Oh. Anywho, hey y'all, uh, I am, last night I made fried rice for dinner and I was supposed to make gyoza too, but my wrappers had gotten put in the freezer. So they were frozen solid. So of course I couldn't do anything. So I'm gonna make them today for lunch. Now gyoza wrappers are actually round, um, but I have to go to the Asian market to get them. I don't want to drive that far. So pretty much every grocery store carries the wonton wrappers, which is exactly the same. It's just these are square and the gills are square. <laughs> hey. So, here's my wrappers. And I'd already mixed my meat mixture up together last night. Um, this is a mixture of ground beef, ground pork, and then there's shredded cabbage in there, chopped onions, and seasoning. There's ginger, salt, pepper, garlic. Um, chives. Um, I put some of my bone wand in there. Um, seasoned salt and soy sauce. Yeah, that's what's in there. And so all you do is you put your meat in your little wrappers, fold them up, press them together, seal them. And once they're all done, you fry them. You can either pan fry them, you can deep fry them, or you can steam them. Um, my family has always eaten them um, pretty much deep fried. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I have been, you know, helping the family make gyoza since I was two. My kids have two because the longest part is filling these dumplings is making the actual dumplings. So, it's like a family thing in my family to have gyoza like. When we're all together, it's like, hey, let's have gyoza. <laughs> um, my grandfather was stationed in Japan. So, you know, Japanese food just became like a, a normal thing. Um, and it just stuck. Um, years later, my um, aunt was actually born in Japan. But yeah, so I have um, some egg white in here. This is to seal the edges. And then I have my meat. So you can do one at a time. You can do several at a time. Just kind of depends on your speed. I like to kind of line a few up. To get it going for myself. But if you, you know, they will dry out. So if you're slower at doing it, you don't want to take them all out. I usually have um, a moist napkin to put in here. But I think both of my children just went outside. So I can't get a moist napkin right now unless I moisten it with it's vinegar because that's all I have sitting over here. So, um, yeah, so all you do, take me. Oh, and there's also um, egg yolk in here because in order to get the white, you got to have the yolk. So, let's mix it and skim it. 
Some people just use water to um, to make it stick, but it doesn't stick as well when it's just water. Egg works like glue. So you just get your small little meatball. You don't want it to be too big because you want to make sure you can completely seal the dumpling without any gaps anywhere. And I think this has a little too much meat on it. Take some of that back. Because if you have a gap, any holes in there, your meat will fall out into your into your pan, pot, whatever you're cooking in, and you'll have an empty dumpling. So you'll have deep fried meat somewhere floating around, and then you'll have a dumpling by itself with nothing in it. Hey, babe. I know you like gyoza. I have made gyoza for Vance before. Normally, I don't wear gloves doing this. I usually I'll do it with my bare hands because it's just kind of easier to make the, the balls. Um, it kind of sticks to the gloves, but because I have nails, uh, if, if I have nails, I'm not, I'm not playing with meat and it's all in my nails and all that stuff. That's just not sanitary to me, so. I'd rather put gloves on. Okay. So then, got my little balls here. All I'm gonna do is on one side, you turn it into an, into an angle and on two sides, you put your egg, and then the other side, you leave it dry, and then you press them together. And these are made with raw meat, uncooked meat. Uh, I was watching um, Lovely Nini's Lovely Nini's channel one time, and she was making um, uh, shoot, I can't think of the name of the. Um, roll but it kind of looks like an egg roll but it's made with basically a meat mixture just like this and it's raw meat and you put it in the roll and you fry it and there were people in her comments that were just going off about the fact that it was raw meat blah blah blah, blah. and you know saying how you know it's supposed to be cooked meat hey dean hey miss catlana hey magdalene hey almartis and, you know, they're just going on and on. And I'm like, okay, if you have never made Asian food, you cannot tell an Asian person that they are raw lumpia. That's what she was making. She was making lumpia. You can't tell, you know, an Asian person that they're wrong with the way that they are making their food, you know. And I'm like, she's doing exactly what's supposed to be done. When you go somewhere and you get lumpia or you get 
a beef fried dumpling, pork fried dumpling, chicken fried dumpling. The meat's raw when they put it in the dough and then it gets cooked while it's cooking. You know, and then, you know, somebody responded to me in the comments talking about when I go and I get me a Philly cheesesteak egg roll, you going to tell me it's not cooked? I'm like, fool, you are not going to try and make a point talking about a Philly cheesesteak egg roll. Do you really think if you go to Japan or China or the Philippines, you're going to get a Philly cheesesteak egg roll? No, baby, that's some corner shop that you are going to, and they are giving y'all their leftover steak from whatever they was cooking, the stuff that didn't get used, and now they're making a Philly cheesesteak egg roll to give y'all the leftover stuff. That's not authentic food. Like, just sit down and hush. Like, get out of people's comments telling them that they're wrong for something you know nothing about. Like, it's just so ridiculous sometimes the stuff that people are saying in comments, and they don't know anything about what they're talking about. Hey, priest. You make lumpia just like I'm doing this right here. If I had gotten egg roll wrappers instead, I would just roll it. I can actually make these into little egg rolls. But um, you roll it up like an egg roll and then you fry it. You do the exact, this is the exact same thing for lumpia that's um, for this, except I don't think lumpia has, um, there's no cabbage in lumpia. It's just meat and seasonings, and I think maybe some onion. Priest hush. I'm gonna roll one, I'm gonna make one of these into a little mini egg roll so you can see what I mean. Rayhan or Shayla, is anyone in here? Come here. Spring has officially arrived. The flies are back. Give me a second. I'm going to get you put some water on a napkin for me. I don't really like these wonton wrappers very much. They are way too overly floured. Why? And the company just overly floured them. When they're this floury, they get dry a whole lot faster. Like, there's just too much flour on these wrappers. Hey, because it's an American company and us Americans just mess up That's everything. Right, oh. But this is American. <laughs> so you can read it. Oh, while we look at the way this skinny thing on the bag is looking. <laughs> I do the same you thing your that Doodle soup. does when you say something crazy to him. <laughs> Doodle. She did it right now. <laughs> Oreo. What? She was ready. All right. So I'm going to roll this one, y'all, like an egg roll so you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this more into a log. Oh. Okay, so see how it kind of straightened it out? Mama, what do you need? Can you wait a second? I told you, give me a minute and I'm going to tell you. Hey, Mark.
I will feed anybody, Dean. I have no problem with that. All right, so I'm still going to do the same thing. Put a little egg. And then all you do is you fold one corner in and press it. And then you got to fold these corners across and press them. And then you have a little envelope. Then you just put a little on the other corner and you're going to roll up your envelope. And that's your little mini egg roll or lumpia, which is about the big, you know, the normal size egg roll wrappers. All right, I need you to wet this for me so I can put it in the wontons. Hey, Rhonda. show y'all see all this flour on here it's just unnecessarily overly floured like there's no need for that much flour on the dough like it's I can actually use my nail and scratch off flour there's so much flour on here it's just not needed like it's ridiculous All that flour just dries it out. <laughs> yeah, it does. Y'all hear those crows outside? Sound like Jeepers Creepers is out there. But y'all see, this is like a long process. Why my camera tilt? There we go. So, you know, and I'm only gonna do one pack. But just imagine when you have, you know, a house full of people, my grandma, my grandpa, my uncle, his daughter, my aunt, my, co my other cousin, you know, Rayana Shaylin, you know, you need a lot, you know, so we're making three or four packs. Everybody had to come help. Like, that's why I've been making them for so long. So my kids have been making them since they were so little because everybody got to come in with their fingers and start, you know. <laughs> and usually the way that it happens, you know, at my grandma's house, if we're doing them, is like as they're being fried, they're being eaten. So as we're making them, they're being eaten. So by the time we're done, there's no gills or like, then everybody's like, what's for dinner? <laughs> I can make uh, jollof rice and I can make pepper stew and um, 
meat pies. I've made fufu. <clears throat> okay. I'll make jar of rice one day. My ex-husband was Nigerian specifically, so I do it, you know, the Nigerian way. Yeah, I've had Jamaican food. I've had like, you know, jerk chicken and oxtails. Meat pies. the music. You can get African food in, in Texas. Depends on where you are. Because in Houston, there's African restaurants. The first place my husband ever took me was a, um, a Nigerian place in Houston. That was our first date. Our first date, I had pepper stew. And then we went to the movies. It was really our first and only date. <laughs> Jerk chicken is good. It's spicy, but it's really good. Yeah. Use a spoon. Your ex is from Gambia. Um, I think it was Silent Hill. Either Silent Hill or, um, what was that M. Night Shyamalan movie? Like his very first M. Night Shyamalan movie? with the lady in the water. It might have been that. It was either Silent Hill or that that first M. Night Shyamalan movie. Was that what it was called? Lady, was that what it was? I think that's what it was called, Lady in the Water.
African vegetable that looks like a cabbage and tastes and smells awful. But if you're sick, it'll make you better. I don't know what it is. I don't know what that one is. Hold on, y'all. My leg is killing me. I got to. I need to adjust. Because this is hurting. It couldn't have been 2006 because Rayon was born in 2006. So it would have been 2000. Four or five. <laughs> because when I got, um, when I thought I was pregnant with Rayon, I'd been married for over a year at that time. So I think it was 2000, February 2005 is when I found out I was pregnant with Rayon. So it had to be 2004. <laughs> Whatever movie it was, it was 2004. Because we got married. Um, two months after our first date. Yeah, I met him in April and we were married in June. Well, now I met him. We went on our first date in April and I married him in June. But like the day after our first date, he gave me the keys to his house. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the day after our first date, he gave me the keys to his house so that I could um, come over. Like I could go, like when he was at work, I didn't have to wait for him to get off work so I could cook for him and stuff. And that's why I said that was our first and only date because I had the keys after that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that lets you know, you know, my character. I am who I am, you know what I mean? But yeah, I had the keys to the, to the house, to the car. Yeah. I didn't need the keys to the car because I had my own car. Had my own house. But, yeah. And then two months later, we were married. I didn't know I was getting married. He actually told me that we were going to pick up one of his friends because his friends had to go do a ceremony. And so, you know, we got in the car and we go pick up this friend and they're only talking in Yoruba. So I don't know anything they're saying, you know, and they're both, you know, dressed up in African attire. And then we go into the courthouse and he just like leaves me and the friend sitting in the courthouse. And he, you know, walked off somewhere and I'm just sitting there with the friend. I didn't think the friend spoke any English. So I'm just sitting there in silence. And then all of a sudden he comes back and he's like, uh, I just talked to the judge and um, he said, we can get married today. And I was like, 
I'm looking at the friend and I'm looking at him and I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, the judge says we can get married today. So come on, we're going to get married. I'm looking at the friend and the friend is looking at me and smiling. And I'm like, I don't understand what's happening. And so we went into the judge's office and the judge married us. And then we went downstairs to the clerk to give her the, the uh, license. And the clerk started asking questions. She asked me first. She's like, what's your name? Have you ever been married before? And I said, nope. Do you have any children? And I said, nope. And then she asked him, now mind you, this man had told me he'd never been married before. He didn't have any children. You know, he was here in America. He was all alone. Da -da 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 -da. So she looks at him. What's your name? Have you ever been married before? And he said, yes. And I'm like, wait, what? And then she says, have, do you have any children? And he says, yes. And I'm like, and I knew at the point, yeah, so, um, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> talk to <laughs> If priests go to Judge Joe Brown, he gonna tell him that he on drugs. He gonna tell him he on drugs. He ain't got no job. He gonna say everything he can think of to Joe Brown just so he can get cussed out. I didn't even get a ring. There was no ring. There was no ring because we wasn't. We went there for his friend's ceremony. And then when we left and we went to head back to the car, the friend started talking to me in English. Congratulations. Da -da 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 -da. And I'm looking at him like, you speak English? Yeah, everything was in English after that. I'm like, okay. But we actually, um, our marriage ended up being pretty much annulled. Um, when Rayon was about three months old because his lawyer that he had used um, for his citizenship papers and stuff, he actually used them and then the lawyer didn't do his job and I ended up doing his paperwork for him. But because the lawyer had touched his paperwork, it was still in the system. Well, that lawyer got uh, deported for fraud. Well, after he got deported for fraud, the U.S. government, the INS, started going through every piece of paperwork that that lawyer had ever touched. And because he had touched my ex's paperwork, they went through that paperwork too, even though the final paperwork was done by me. But his, you know, he had touched his paperwork at some point. So they start going through the paperwork. And when they did, they found 
a lot of my ex's paperwork was forged, fake stuff. So his um, divorce decree was not real. Therefore, he was already married. So he can't marry me. So they basically sent a paper and said, um, you're not married. And I um, had actually left him prior to that. I left him on the day after Mother's Day, my very first Mother's Day after I had Brian. Um, I left him the next morning because that morning he chose to get up that morning and um, send me an email. The first thing I would do every morning was get up. And, you know, when Rayon would wake up, I'd get up because she's ready to eat and I breastfed. So I'd get up and I'd go sit at the computer and I'd nurse her at the computer and I'd check my email and, you know, see if I had any um, instant messages that I missed or whatever. You know, because that was back in the day, a Yahoo instant messenger and AOL instant messenger and all that stuff, MSN, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, and me and my friends and stuff, that's how we, you know, talk to each other most of the time. So um, when I got up that morning, Mother's Day morning, I'm sitting there eating and he had, um, he had gotten up really early and got dressed and he had started going in the closet and he was just digging through bags and bags and bags of stuff. He always had a bunch of crap in the closet. Um, he's always going to like Ross and Marshall's and stuff and getting, you know, the stuff they have on clearance. And he just buys up a lot of crap and then later, you know, gives crap to people for gifts. Um, well, he was in there in that closet and he's just digging and digging and digging. And he comes out with all these gift bags and he's got, you know, a bunch of gifts for a woman. But then he also has a bunch of like gifts for little boys, you know, trucks and, and uh, like transformers and different kinds of stuff like a bunch of little boy toys and then stuff for a woman. Well, he didn't bring nothing over to me. Like, you know, he's like, I'm going to go. And, you know, him and all the gifts leave. Well, before he left, he had sent me an email. And so when I'm sitting there feeding Rayon and I'm reading this email, he sends me this email. And he's basically now she was, um, like I said, she was about two, three months old at this time. And she's a, she was a completely breastfed baby. Neither one of my babies got formula. They were breastfed babies. So she was um, nursing. And I'd been asking him, you know, basically since she was born, if he'd get me a breast pump. Because I'm not working because I just had a baby. And um, he wouldn't get one. He's like, um, she'll be fine until you come home. Because I was like, I, I want to go back to work. Can you get me a breast pump so I can go to work? And he's like, she'll be fine until you come home. You don't need one. Babies eat like every, you know, two and a half, three hours. You work eight hours a day. My baby's not going to be okay until I come home. I'm like, what are you talking about? And so in this email, hey, Michelle. Okay, I will. Um, in this email, um, he had asked me like a week or so before. He had told he had come home and told me that he, um, one of his friends had told him about this class that you could take, that I could take, and. You could either pay $500 for the class or you could pay $5,000 for the class. But either one, when you finish taking the class, you'll be able to get a job working on computers making $50 an hour or more. And that just sounds fishy to me. I'm like, how do you have a choice of either paying 500 or 5,000 for the same class 
and then you're going to finish and you're going to make 50 to $100 an hour. Why are there two different versions of the same class and you making the same? I'm like, it doesn't sound right to me. I'm like, let me see some paperwork. I don't understand. And he wanted me to ask my mother to give me the money for this class, either the 500 or the 5,000 and me take this class. It didn't sound right. It sounds very scamish to me. And he couldn't tell me what it was called. You know, he had, you know, nothing. He had no paperwork, no titles, no name of the school, nothing. It was just ask your mama for this money, either 500 or 5,000. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no. Hey, Queen Jella. And so um, in this email, he's like um, basically saying, I refuse to go to work. And I'm trying to use him for his money. This man didn't have any money. But I'm trying to use him because I won't ask my money for this, my mama for this money for this class. And I must be just trying to, to, to keep him, to use him. So I'm sitting there. And I start looking around this apartment. Now, this is his apartment. I told y'all, I had a house. I had a whole house of my own in East Texas. I started looking around this apartment. Now, when I met this man, he had a part of a sectional couch that someone had given him. He had a TV on a TV stand. He had a, com a computer sitting on his dining room table. He had dining room table and chairs. He had dishes, which he stored in the sink. There was no shower curtain. There was no curtains on the windows. His mattress and box spring were on the floor in his room. And he had one of them rubber made um, things that you get with the three drawers in it that you get from um, Walmart. And that's where his socks and underwear were. That's it. That's all he had. Well, when I met him, I showed him that dishes go in the cabinets. Um, got him a dish rack. I brought him a bed frame. I put shower curtains up. I put curtains up. Uh, I bought shelves for his room because he had shoes just lined up all over the floor, all over the room. I put his shoes on shelves. Um, I got a desk. I, I, I made it a house, basically. And so, um, hey, Alex. I'm looking around this house. And I'm like, I'm the worst freaking gold digger ever. Wait a minute. Why have I gotten all this crap for this man? And I'm a gold digger. I'm like, you know, I'm the worst freaking. I'm like, you know what? Let me get my gold digging butt out of here. I called my stepdad. And I was like, uh, Robert, I need you to come get. Me and Rayon, first thing tomorrow, we leave it. And he was excited. He's like, okay, I'll be there first thing in the morning. I'll be there. <laughs> he was, he was, he could not wait. He was like, okay, I'm coming. He didn't ask no questions. He didn't care because he didn't like him from the beginning. So um that was like I said, that was Mother's Day. So I finished my email. I took my shower, got me and Sh me and Rayon dressed, and we went out to eat with my grandmother and my mother for Mother's Day. On my way home from eating with them, I went by U-Haul and I got a bunch of boxes. Came back to the apartment. I put the boxes behind Rayon's crib. You couldn't see them; they were up against the wall behind the crib. When he came home. I um, left my leftovers, you know, sitting there for him. 
because he always ate my food because y'all know I don't eat a lot. So he had my leftovers. He ate my food. Um, I cooked dinner. He ate dinner. Um, and, uh, you know, went to bed. Everything was normal or whatever. He got up the next morning. He, you know, he's Muslim. So he got, he gets up at like 430 in the morning. And he prays, takes a shower and he prays. And then um, he'll get back into bed and then he'll get back up at like seven and leave to go to work. So as soon as he walked out that door at seven and said, I'm gone, I got up, grabbed them boxes, started putting them together, packed up all of mine and Shaylin's stuff, had it waiting by the front door for my stepdad. And then I proceeded to take my curtains down, take my shower curtain down, take my shelf, take my bed frame, take all my stuff that I bought with my gold digging money. And I didn't need it because, like I said, I had a whole house full of furniture. I don't need it. I took all that stuff down to the dumpster, threw it in there. My stepdad come, it took him about three loads to get mine and rayon stuff, mainly rayon stuff, because, you know, I, I had a whole baby. So to get, you know, her crib, you know, I had cases of diapers and, you know, all her clothes, stuff like that, to get all her stuff. And now, mind you, I'm not hood. The house was spotless. I put it back exactly the way it was the day that I first walked in there. That's exactly the way it was when I left. I didn't break nothing. I didn't take nothing of his. I didn't burn none of his stuff. I didn't bleach none of his stuff. I left him exactly the way he was before he ever met me. Went to my uh, mom's house. Because like I said, my house was in East Texas. This was in Houston. Went to my mom's house. And um, when he got off work that night, when he got home, I, oh, I left a note on the counter that said, we, my mom's. Um, so when he got off from work, he calls me and he goes, how come you didn't tell me you were leaving? I would have given you some money. I don't want your money. Like, no, thank you. I'm good. We're here. Goodbye. And then he's like, starts calling back. Where is blah, blah, blah. Where is this? Where is that? I'm like, oh, that was mine. So I threw it away. Because I don't need it. It's like, you threw it away. Well, I can't have it. I'm like, well, no, the, the, trash truck came and picked up the trash. It's gone. I'm like, no, you don't need it. You don't need it because cause I'm a gold digger. So I had to take all my gold back. And that was that. That was the end of our marriage for me. Now for him, he had actually asked me at one point to go and live with my mom. And save up my money. Go finish getting my RN. Save up my money working as an RN. And buy myself a house. Like my mom's house. Yeah, you know, my mom lives in like a million dollar house. Um, Y'all saw it when I went there for... Um, Christmas, but he told me to buy me a house like my mom's. And then when he got old and he was done messing around with women, he would come back and live with me and Rayon and let me take care of him. I said, no, thank you. I'm good. But after I left, that's still pretty much what he felt like was, you know, 
once he gets old, he was going to come back. Hold on now. Hello? I'm good. How are you? Uh-huh. I still got this cold. It's starting to get clear up, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just got to go over there and get that stuff at Aunt Brenda's that I told you about. You said you wanted the shoes and stuff, so I just got to go get that. I think they, they already got it the last time we went, I think. I don't think there was anything else that, that was over that they wanted. Mm hmm Okay. I'll go over there to uh, tomorrow and I'll get the shoes and stuff and bring it to you. Mm hmm Yep, everything's all right. No, not yet. I haven't been anywhere other than work. work. Yeah, everything's all right at work. Okay. Not a whole lot, but, you know, still like it was before. You know, this is not busy season, so it's just, you know, back in the slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Shayla told me you were going out to eat the other day. Mm-hmm. And then she told me today, she said, you need some bananas and orange juice. Okay. Okay, some apple juice. All righty. Okay. All right, I'll get it. Okay. I'll probably go tomorrow. Well, tomorrow I'm going tomorrow anyway because I'm going to go over there and get the um, that stuff. But yeah, I'll get it tomorrow. On the walls? What you mean? Like, like her stuff or what? She's got some, um, a couple of pictures and stuff. And then, you know, you got the stuff that daddy, you know, had written and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a couple pictures and stuff. Okay. All righty. Okay. Love you. God bless you. Hey, Lexi. Um, but yeah, where was I? Oh, he wanted, um, you know, wanted me to move and he'd come stay with me later. And I was like, nope, I'm done. When I leave, I'm done. <laughs> when I left, I was done. But he still felt like, you know, he was going to work his way back. And I think he finally, it's the last trip when he came here, when I did that video at main event. 
I think that finally got it through his head because, you know, I didn't even let him come to my house, you know, because when he comes, he wants to come. He wants to stay at my house, stay here for free, you know, try to come in my room. And so what I did when he, you know, he just, you know, he, first off, he didn't, you know, like giving you advance notice he was coming. Like I woke up that morning to a text from him saying I'm on my way to Oklahoma. And so I texted him back and I said, okay, when you get to your hotel room, let me know where you are and I'll bring Ryan to see you. So then he responded to that and he was like, well, I'll just stay in Dallas. Okay. You stay in Dallas. He said he was going to come here and then he was going to turn around. And he'd go sleep in Dallas. Okay, you do that. And then when he got here, I gave him the address to my dad's house. Because y'all know I still have my dad's house from where he passed. That's the address I gave him. Because he has no memory. He doesn't remember mine. He doesn't know how to get here. So, um, We met him over there. Then we drove to main event. When we got into main event, when the girls went into laser tag, that's when he leans over and tells me, uh, I'm just going to stay here tonight and I'll go to Dallas in the morning. When we left main event, I took him back to my dad's house. I gave him blankets and pillows. I was like, here you go. And we finna go home. And he's like, oh, you not staying here? No. You staying here. And then he's like, oh, well, I get, I'll just go ahead and go to Dallas then. You do that. And then he was like, but I need to follow you because I need to know how to get back to the freeway. Okay, follow me to the freeway. So we got to the freeway and I put my blinker on for him to turn. I stuck my hand out the window and pointed for him to turn. He kept following me. I politely pulled into a gas station and I said, you missed your turn. He's like, oh, I, I didn't, there was no way. It was, it was closed off. There was no way to get over there. I'm like, oh no, it's wide open. You need to turn around and get on your freeway. <laughs> and so then I drove off. He started driving. I drove off. I went up a block. I turned down some stride, side street I've never driven down in my life. And I started flowing it. Like I was going about 60 on this side street in the opposite direction, nowhere, not going anywhere toward my house. And we made a big old loop around the whole city. Then we went to Burger King. Then we came home, made sure he wasn't gonna figure out where I was. I was like, oh no, bro, go on, go on to Dallas, wherever you're going. You're not coming here. So, last time he called, couple weeks ago first off he called he's always calling want to know if I can um if I'll cancel trying to get me to cancel um child support he doesn't pay it anyway and I'm like why do I need to cancel something that you don't pay anyway just keep not paying you don't pay it so you know, but in Oklahoma and Texas, if your kids have Medicaid, you have to get child support. You have to receive child support if your children receive Medicaid. And Rayon and Shaylin both get Medicaid because I cannot afford the, what is it, $1,200 a month that they want for insurance. 
I don't have that. $1,200? No, it's not even a month. I think it was every two weeks. $1,200 every two weeks for the insurance. I don't have that. I, I, I don't have that. <laughs> um, so I'm like, no, I can't cancel anything because if I cancel it, she will have no insurance. Ray, I need glasses. Ray, I need to see a doctor. You know, like no, I, I can't. I can't help you with that. You don't pay it anyway. Just don't pay. It. Um. Hey, itchy guru. Um, I am making gyoza. It's a Japanese fried dumpling. I'm almost done with the dumplings. Got a few more left. I have a bunch of meat left though. Um, so he, when he called a couple weeks ago, he was like, uh, asking me if I could do, um, divorce paperwork, how, you know, how you could do divorce paperwork and we could go ahead and get divorced. Or when was I coming to Houston or something, something, whatever it was. And I was like, oh, you ain't got to do all that. Just go ahead, write up the paperwork and send it to me. I'll sign it and it can be over and done with. Like divorce is, is nothing if both people agree to be divorced. And I left you 12 years ago. Like, now, mind you. We are not supposed to be married because I just told y'all that our marriage was basically annulled because he was already married. Well, three, four years ago, somehow, some way, this man remarried me without me being there. Because afterward, he told me that a letter came in the mail and I had to come to a meeting at the INS office in Houston. So I had to drive to Houston to go to the INS office. And I thought maybe it had something to do with Rayon because he had had me have to take her to this weird government building and they did DNA testing on her and all this stuff to verify that she was his. And like they took these pictures of her and all this stuff to go in his INS file. So I thought it was just, you know, about that stuff with Rayon. But no, I get there and this lady starts telling me about my new wedding date and blah, blah, blah. And I look at her, I'm like, I don't have a new wedding date. She's like, yeah, well, you know, your first wedding wasn't legal. So your new one and your date, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't have a new wedding date. You know, and she's just looking at me like I'm crazy and she's giggling. And, you know, he's just sitting over there not saying a word. And I'm looking at this lady like, I don't have a new wedding date. Like, what are you talking about? And so she just keeps going on and on. I don't even know what the wedding date was because I was not listening. Like, I'm like, I have no new wedding. I have no new wedding date. And... So I don't know what he did. I wasn't there. I'm in the state of Oklahoma. Somehow I had a wedding date, a new marriage date in the state of Texas. And I was here. Like, I had nothing to do with that. I don't know what he did. But now we need a divorce. We talking to be quiet. And so... Um, Yeah, so now he's talking about paperwork. I'm like, send me the paperwork. I'll sign it. I will sign it. So I'm still waiting for paperwork to show up. Where is their fighting in the water? Right here. Shake them. Put five this I don't know what he did, Catlana. 
put five of those and three of those. I don't know what he did. Uh, Diva, the ingredients in this meat, this is ground beef and ground pork. And then there's shredded cabbage, chopped onion, garlic. And then there's ginger in here, seasoning salt, pepper, chives, soy sauce. Oh, and some of my um, bumundu. But, yeah, so I'm just waiting for that divorce paperwork for the marriage that I wasn't even there for. Is it the marriage illegal? Mm-hmm. I wasn't there, so I don't see how it's legal. What if he gets arrested and goes to prison? Oh, well, still won't get y'all support. <laughs> Not going to change nothing. Yeah, it's, a, it's like lumpia. That's what I was saying earlier. It's kind of like lumpia. And I even made one of these into a little tiny lumpia. I don't think lumpia has cabbage in it. I think that's really like the main, the main difference. This kind of reminds me of baby beef egg rolls. I told you that's what their baby beef egg rolls taste like is gyoza. Their gyoza is horrible. Yeah, but their baby beef egg roll is good. It barely has meat in it. It's basically just one time. I had meat in it. It was. Just, I don't think I ever. I don't think you've ever had the gyoza from that place. No, I have. Remember, because I ordered it and then I ordered it. I got like three of them. Oh, okay, because I know I got them and they were horrible. And that was years ago. That was way before I had kids. No, I, I just took a nap with Doodle. Congratulations! Did she pee on you? No, she just went to sleep and then woke back up. And then she kept falling off of the couch. It has carrots and onions? Okay, yeah. So this has celery and onions. I mean, cabbage and onions. I think Shayla's outside my window playing. Or it's a bird over there. I've never made lumpia, but I make gyoza all the time. And I made big old gyoza egg rolls too. <laughs> Been eating gyoza since I was very, 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 very little. I said earlier, my um, grandfather was stationed in Japan. My aunt was born in Japan. So, Japanese food is like something that we eat. Well, really, all Asian food, Japanese, Chinese, or whatever. The gyoza is one that everybody starts helping to make when they're like, you know, 
two. Everybody got to get in there with their fingers and help. Pinch, pinch, pinch. <laughs> When I went to Taiwan, when I took my little cousin to Taiwan to see my uncle, I told y'all before he um, played professional baseball over there. Um, when I went, I actually taught a Chinese lady, his girlfriend, her name was Sally. I taught Sally how to make gyoza. So I taught a Chinese lady how to make Japanese dumplings. Because my uncle wanted some, so she decided she wanted to help. She made some um, sesame shrimp. And I made gyoza. Hey, DC and Lisa. Right, we have like one, two, three, four. I think we have five left. I have a lot of meat left. I'm going to put this meat in the freezer for another time. It's a bird inside the air conditioner. You have to make sure your ends are sealed. Like I said, your meat will fall out. Last two. If you go to the Asian market, you can actually get the gyoza skins instead of the uh, wonton. The only difference is the gyoza skin, it, it's round. It's a round wrapper instead of being a square. But they're exactly the same. And at my Asian market here, they have um, yellow 
and then they have white. And I bought both and they both taste exactly the same. I don't know what's in the yellow to make it yellow, um, but it still tastes uh -oh, exactly the same. So either one is fine. Um, square or round is fine. Okay, so here's all my dumplings, y'all. All my gyozas. Sit that there. Dallas Cowboy Ziplocs. Why? Because they were 98 cents. <laughs> Dry round. Hey, Mason. I don't know what a dry round is. These are in the refrigerated section. These aren't the rice papers. These are the um, the wrappers. So they're moist dough. Gyoza. Gyoza. And it's um, the ones that I made. These are beef, ground beef, ground pork. Um, and then there's cabbage, onion, garlic, ginger, chives, salt, pepper, um, garlic powder, onion powder, soy sauce. Um, and I put some my um, bowmundu in it. It's like a celery based seasoning. Rayon, come here. Send you the bag. Cost me way more money to send them than it did to buy them. Give me that oil. And then put this meat in the freezer in the kitchen. Have some more oil somewhere. Hooray, I need you to wash this out. I need you to wash this out.
Okay, okay, oil go. Seen the bags? They had them at um a grocery store here at Crest. I think they accidentally ordered them. I think it was an accidental order. I think that's why it was, you know, on clearance. Because this is Oklahoma. They're not Dallas Cowboy fans here. Once, um, a few months ago, I was in a Walmart and they had um, Dallas Cowboy noodles. They had Dallas Cowboy noodles and they were on clearance the same way. Because, like, it was an accidental shipment, you know? I didn't buy the noodles, though. Hold on, y'all. I gotta find this oil. Well, can you go over here and see if you see the other oil? Uh oh, y'all. I'm sorry. She put the bowl up there and knocked it in. All right, here we go. This is the, it's just a little tin pack. And they were 98 cents. Way back there. Okay. Finally. You have this um, cooker. This fryer. Well, not fryer, but give it. Yes. Tell them to make up version right here. Thank you, Lexi. All right. Put that in. I got to get this level. Uh, I want to mix these together and see how it tastes. I don't know where it is. It's too far away to read. It's the new sour Kool-Aid packet and Hawaiian crunch. Oh, okay. I know this is very lemonade. All right. Let's see. I need something to pop this up a little bit this way to level this out. There, okay. Let me use my bouillon. This is a um, new wave. Um, I don't know what you call it. Skillet? Well, electric skillet type thing. Oh, that's from the um from my rice cooker, I think. Yeah, that's the pot from my rice cooker. And I get all this stuff out of here today. I'm looking for a bag. So I put the trash in it. Here we go.
and Lexi, I still have something to send you, but the package is taking forever to come. Now it says it's going to be here by the 20th. So hopefully it's here by the 20th. Okay, let's see. I'll go up there tomorrow and um, see if they still have some. Or no, I, I, I'll go today. I'll go today and see if they have some. If they have some, I'll buy some more. How many do you want, Diva? I like this thing because it's got like, it's a little digital thing. You push it in to turn it on. And when it first turns on, it's on the temperature and you turn a little dial and it changes your temperature. And you push it again to make it start. And then it has a timer on it. And it changes your time to add more time. You just turn the knob. And it adds more time for you. So it can keep kicking. Keep cooking. But I have to go out because I'm out of ice. And y'all know I need my ice. So I'm leaving the house anyway. So yeah. Ryan, come hand me this pot back so I can put some um, paper towels in it to put the gyoza in. Mm. Hand me the pot so I can put the... Is Shayla in the house or outside? I thought that stuff was going to come so quick from Lane Bryant. They sent me one item. And the rest, I'm still waiting. You just like the bag. Yeah, you got to use Cash App because um, I don't know what's going on with pay my PayPal. It's like somebody told me that they couldn't access it. And I was still accessing it. And then when I went back to try again to see, I can't even access it. I can't reset the password. I can't do anything. It just has me like in an endless loop. But she said that's what it was doing to her too. Like it would act like it was working. And then when she, she tried to um, do anything, it was just sending her in a loop. And that's what it's doing to me. Yeah, that's the pot. This is it. It goes in a rice cooker. It goes in a rice cooker. Okay, Diva, I will. So I made fried rice in this last night. This was full of fried rice. It's all gone. <laughs> it's all gone. It was supposed to be, like I said, we we're supposed to have fried rice and these last night, but somehow the wrappers got put in the freezer instead of the fridge. 
You know how to test your grease to see if it's hot? Put a wooden spoon or something wooden in there. And if bubbles beat up around the wood, it's hot. I did have my shake this morning, y'all, my smoothie. I had one this morning and I had one day before yesterday. I did not have one yesterday. Yesterday I worked and I didn't like schedule myself enough time between waking up and having to leave to make a smoothie. So yesterday was a bad day. See, but when you do the splashes of water, that could possibly start a fire. Sticking the wood in there, there's no dangerous fire. Because you, I mean, everybody knows fire and oil don't, I mean, water and oil don't mix. So that's the more dangerous way to do it. Non-dangerous. Put a wooden utensil in there and the beads will bubble up around it. And it's hot. No danger of fire. Normally, I have more, um, yeah, Lexi, when I was in Houston for Christmas, I made it live on, um, thing. If you look at my Christmas, um, videos in Houston, I made crab rangoon when I did the, um, the crab ball. Hey, Nettie Boo. What's inside of this or what was inside my crab rangoon? This is ground, my, you can, you can do it with chicken. It can be chicken, it can be beef, it can be pork, it can be shrimp, um, fish, but mine are beef and ground beef, ground pork, and then cabbage and onions garlic, ginger, and then your seasonings, which um, I have salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, um, the Beaumont, um chives, and soy sauce. Yeah, I did the um, crab rangoon 
Christmas. And I put lump crab in it and cream cheese and chives. This has their sweet onions in here. There's sweet onions in here. For my crab rangoon, I just use the, um, you know, the fresh chives, green onion. Um, you can use soy sauce. There's also gyoza dip, which I have some, but I'm not sure where exactly it is at the moment. Um, but they do make a sauce called gyoza sauce. You can use gyoza sauce. You can use, um, you can dip it in the uh, sweet chili sauce, which I have some of that in the fridge. Plum sauce, whatever kind of sauce you like, you can use, you know, it's up to you. We usually do soy sauce. Or the gyoza sauce. And you just have to remember, you know, your meat is raw. So you just keep turning it and allowing it to cook. So your meat has time to cook inside. And your dumplings don't burn. When you have more oil, like I said, it, it does cook, you know, go faster. But that was all of my oil. So... Yeah, you can deep fry. You can deep fry them. You can pan fry them. You can steam them. I don't care for, you know, the, the beef steamed. If I'm going to have a steamed dumpling, it's going to be either like chicken or shrimp or something. Maybe pork. But I don't want steamed ground beef. That just doesn't even sound good to me. But I do like when they, um, if you get them from a, from a restaurant, when they pan fry, they fry one side. Like the top side will just be like, you know, look like a steamed dumpling. And then the bottom side will be all golden brown, but they fry just one side on the skillet. I do like them like that. I will eat it like that. But where it's just steamed on both sides, I mm -mm. it's too gummy. Pot stickers are um, basically just the Chinese version of gyoza. Um, I haven't necessarily made pot stickers. I, I, gyoza is what I do. It's the one that I've grown up eating. So mine pretty much always have the same filling inside, the cabbage, onion, and meat. The pot stickers, I think, um, usually have carrots like the um, the uh, lumpia. I don't really cook anything with um, carrots. I can't eat carrots anymore, so I don't cook anything with carrots. So even if I was making something that was supposed to have carrots in it, I wouldn't put carrots in it. But even before 
you know, I couldn't eat carrots anymore. I still, I just, I never made any, I always just made gyoza. I love the flavor of gyoza. I love that onion, cabbage, garlic, ginger mixture. They messed up on the inside because the outside looks good. I don't think I've ever bought a whole head of anything that was messed up. I've never had that happen. Head of lettuce, head of cabbage. Now that bag, the bag stuff, yeah, you can get some that's messed up. You got to inspect that stuff if you buy any of the bag stuff. But usually when you get the whole head, wow, all brown inside. But, you know, now because they spray everything with those chemicals and stuff to make the outside stay green and bright or whatever. Stuff doesn't change colors anymore like it's supposed to because they done, you know, dipped it in dye or something. Wow, almost two dollars a head. The frying sound is ASMR. I can't wait until I hook my um put my fish tank up so I can hear the sound of the fish tank. I love the sound of a fish tank. For me, ASMR for me is the sound of a train, the sound of a grandfather clock, and the sound of a fish tank. Because when I was growing up, we always had a fish tank. My granny always had her grandfather clock. It's still down there over at my papa's house right now. He doesn't really wind it anymore because it's just, you know, he got to walk downstairs, go wind the clock. It's not necessary. He's got, you know, digital clocks everywhere. You have to walk all the way down there to wind the clock. But it still works. Um... So when I inherited, he was like, it's still worth it. <laughs> but I love that sound. It's a soothing sound. You know, just always hearing it growing up. Um, and the train, because we, um, not when I was local, humble, but me and my granny moved to East Texas. The train tracks ran directly behind our house in the woods. And you would think that would like be irritating, but no, it was like really soothing for me. Oh yeah, baby fish. What kind of fish do you have, Nettie? Diva, were you in there when I told uh, Mark how much those um, goldfish are here? Those goldfish are like $10 each. Even the itty bitty teeny tiny ones, $10 each.
like, I don't know if I want to pay that much for a glowfish. Like, back when I bought my baby, my baby was only $5. <laughs> You know, and it, it, this tiny, this is a big old tank. So I had to put a hundred dollars worth of fish in there, at least. And then they're gonna turn around and die. What if they die? Uh uh. Because I can't find a breeder here. Like, there's no. I can't find any, like, you know, anything other than PetSmart and PetsCo and Walmart. Like, I cannot find this. There's equipment, but I cannot find this. Um, I think the 10, 10, 10 gallon tank that I got. I think it's a 10 gallon. It was the one that Mark and Jesse finally agreed on when I was in the store. <laughs> hey, Deshaun. See, but a beta, I can only have one fish or one pretty fish. I can get a bunch of girls. On just one fish in this big old tank. If I got one of them little bitty beta tanks, yeah, one fish would be fine, but this is a big tank. Unless I had a whole bunch of plants or something to put in there and grow with it and make it pretty. My last beta was so crazy though. He ate my plants. He was a nut ball. Well, that wasn't my net last one because we actually had some when Rayon was like two. I got her. I got one of those um, double tanks, the one with the split down the middle, and we had two beta. And. One of them, one of them jumped out of the tank when we went to bed at night and um, died, of course. And then the other one died right after that one because I think it was lonely. That was the last baby that we had, but mine that I had before that. He was crazy. He would attack the uh, the plant. He ate all the roots off, killed the plant. <laughs> he was nutball. He didn't want nothing invading his space. Anything I put in there, he killed it. Oh, yeah. Fish will jump. If that water's high enough, they will jump. Can you put a beta in a fish with some, in, in a tank with some other type of fish? They'll attack anything, won't they? 
It don't have to be another beta for them to fight. They fight all of them, right? Yeah, I, I walked through my um living room to go open the front door and I stepped on something cold and wet. Well, cold, not wet, but cold. Yeah, that's what I thought. You have to get a tank full of all girls or a tank with one boy. They can go in a tank with certain other fish. My grandfather used to love Oscars. He wanted a big old tank. He wanted a huge tank with Oscars in it. He had a friend who had um, some Oscars and he would go over there every day just to sit and watch the Oscars. All girls can be picky too. My grandfather's friend's Oscars didn't die. I know for the year that I was going over there, she didn't have any die. My beta lived for um, three years. And when he died, he only died because my papa, he was at my papa's house on the di on the um, coffee table in the living room and my papa decided to dust the coffee table and he sprayed a um, pledge in the water. And that was how my beta died after three years. Later, Diva. If I could get some purple goldfish, I wouldn't mind having a tank full of purple goldfish. We're looking at them.
there's some natural fish that are colorful. There's not a lot, but there are some colorful, naturally colorful fish. But most of them are saltwater fish. But someone was um, showing me the other day the fish that he had. And his were all freshwater. I thought they were saltwater. He had all freshwater, but he had some that were naturally yellow and purple. Couple that were purple. He had some blues and some pink skins and some different rainbow fish. But like the um the glowfish that I was looking at, I have a feeling that they're injected with something. But I'm not paying ten dollars each for them either. And they have no kind of guarantee once I take them home that they're gonna live. Mm -mm. vegan um just fill it with all vegetables do um cabbage and um <laughs> you can do the cabbage onion ginger garlic um maybe some mushroom to give you like that meaty texture if you want the meaty texture put some bean sprouts in there and all your seasonings, yeah. Parana. It's a parana. I love Tarzan, y'all. <laughs> have um soy sauce I have some gyoza sauce but I don't know what my thing is it has my sauces in it right now um but we have soy sauce and there's some um sweet chili sauce in my fridge there's some sweet soy sauce in my fridge so yeah you can use sauce you can use any sauce you want I even have some um was it sriracha mayo or whatever that is that goes with the sushi that's coming out in there? You can eat them with whatever you like. Hot mustard if you want hot mustard. Spicy mustard. Mm -hmm. Or you can just eat them by themselves. My mom doesn't dip hers in anything. She just eats the yoga. I don't think my uncle did too. Just eat them. Because they're good as is. Like I said, there's a little um, soy sauce in the meat, in the meat mixture. So they really don't have to have anything. You know, it's kind of like an egg roll. If you're a person who likes, you know, who has to have their egg roll dipped in something, then you might want to dip. If you're a person who eats your egg roll as an egg roll as is, then you probably won't care to get. So 
sometimes when I do my mixture, because like I told you, this is beef and pork. Sometimes instead of it just being plain ground pork, I'll use um, breakfast sausage. I've never done Italian, but I have done it with um, breakfast sausage. But you can do these with chicken, turkey, fish, crab, beef, pork. Cheese. Sometimes my uncle would have me make him some and add cheese to it. I don't really care for them that much with cheese in them. Yeah, almost done. Go tell Shayla the food's almost done. And, you know, being that cheese is my favorite food, you think I would have been all on that, but. I don't know. I don't like my Chinese food with cheese. I guess that's one of my limits. <laughs> I guess that's one of my limits. I don't want cheese with my Chinese food. Because I will cheese up a lot of stuff. Here's the one little mini egg roll that I did. Little lumpia. Thank you, Deshaun. No, it's not hard at all. It's a little time consuming, you know, because we've been on here two hours now. So, you know, making them up is the longest part. But like if you get everybody, you know, everybody's hands in the house going, you know, you can speed up that portion. And they do sell pot stickers and gyozas in frozen bags, but they're just not quite as good. You know, nothing's ever quite as good when you buy the frozen stuff pre-made. Okay, Daddy. Woo! I'm glad they didn't splash on me. Yeah, my granny used to start dinner. It wasn't that early because my granny didn't get up until about 10. But about, 
you know, 11 o'clock, 12, she'd start dinner. And Sunday dinner, she always cooked on Saturday. So that when we came home from church, stuff just had to be warmed up. like this. All right, sit that over there so it can cool. And then y'all can see them. There we go. Take a round so I don't come back. I don't know what's taking so long. The only time my granny ever put like food on the table would be like Thanksgiving and Christmas. And even then, everything still wasn't on the table. Um, like the desserts would never be on the table. But like she put, you know, different stuff in serving dishes and put it on the table. But that would be like, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving. The rest of the year, um, you know, the food would just stay on the stove and then, you know, she'd bring plates to the table. Or you'd bring your own plate to the table, whatever, you know what I mean? I don't know what's taking them so long. Ran. It must be the dryer I'm here. Y'all see my gray hair? I saw it for a second. There you go. Oh yeah, we ate at the table. She just didn't put all the food on the table. We just because my granny always um my granny's table was always decorated, number one, at all times. So that she had a big centerpiece in the middle, and there was china on the table, you know, looking like place settings. So there was always, you know, plate, saucer, fork, bowl, glasses. Um, forks and spoons and all that was always set on the table. But when it was time for dinner, you had to take all that off and put it in the china cabinet and then put our real dinner plates down. 
but she wasn't going to take the centerpiece off and all that stuff. Um, that only came with centerpiece and, and candles and all that stuff. There was crystal all in the middle. That didn't get that Thanksgiving and Christmas. That's the only time she was going to take all that off the table. Yep. Um, but yeah, we always had it at the table. Unless it was like Super Bowl. <laughs> Super Bowl, we didn't eat at the table. Um, or if there was a whole lot of people in the house. If there was an overflow of people, there'd be some people at the table who could fit at the table. And there'd be people sitting, you know, wherever with TV trays and stuff like that when we had, you know a house full of people because sometimes, you know, the little six or eight chairs is at the, t at the dining table is not enough for everybody that's there. But yeah, we always did at the table. It's just, she didn't put everything on the table because she wasn't going to undecorate her table. What took so long? Hello. Now where's Rayon? She's coming. Go wash your hands. Mm -hmm. You are awfully dirty. Or is that all makeup? Makeup. Hey, just me, 87. Thank you for coming. No. You want soy sauce? Yes, please. Thank you. Molly, would you buy a house sitting upstairs? Mm -hmm. I wonder what jingles are you home in the What would it be? The one that was made out of yum yums. Oreo, what should we home? You're just staring at me. The one that was made out of yum yums. What took so long? She was in her friend's house? Yes. I thought that she was at popcorn. You want soy sauce? Or you want sweet soy sauce or the chili? Sweet chili sauce that's in the fridge. Mm -hmm. the sweet chili sauce. Get the sweet chili sauce in here. In the drawer. My granny's desserts would usually be on the bar or during holidays, all the desserts had their own table in the um in the garage or in the um den. This is sweet soy sauce. Are you gonna have any sweet soy sauce? All right. Have you ever had a soybean? Mm -hmm. Got a soybean sprout. That looks like chocolate drizzle. But it's not chocolate because chocolate drizzles on the gyozas would not taste very good. Nope. Disgusting. Thank you. Um, my granny's table 
had a linen cloth, whatever color she was doing at that time for that week or month or whatever, whatever colored cloth was on the bottom, a linen cloth. And then there was a lace cloth on top of that. Like when I tell you my granny loved to decorate, my granny loved to decorate. People used to come to our house, especially on holidays. People came to my granny's house to look at all her decorations because they said her house looked like the mall. Turn that down. Like going into, you know, like Dillard's or... Um, What's that other one called? Something, something table. Or going into Pier 1 and seeing all the decorated tables and stuff like that. That was my granny's house year round. Year round. You know, she might decide that she was going with blue. She, all the curtains would get switched to blue. The linen on the table was blue. And then it had the white lace on top of the blue. You know, she would change all. She had some artificial plants around. She'd take all the blue, all the, you know, she had yellow up before. She'd take all the yellow out, put in all blue. Like she, when I tell you my granny decorated, my granny decorated. And then she decorated for every holiday in addition to her non-holiday decoration. So when there was not a holiday, that month, it would just be her, you know, whatever color she decided she was using. There's mine. Hold on, I'm hurting again, y'all. I gotta adjust. Okay. My box that I was using got moved all the way across the room. So I couldn't even reach it anymore. Let's try this. Kiosas. Let me progress. Where's this part? I think it's my machine. All right, so here's the gyoza. There's me. And you see, it's completely cooked, it's not pink. Cooked all the way through. Good, crispy, crunchy. There's a little mini egg roll lumpia one that I made. You ate it quick? The second time the Vance came here to visit, I made him, I made um, gyoza and fried rice. I made a lot of different stuff while I was here, but 
this was one of the things. Yep, and she went right back out the door. She went right back out the door, too. But I gave her eight of them, or nine. They're pretty good with the sweet soy sauce. This is the first time I'm done with sweet soy sauce. I usually just do it regular. The sweet soy sauce has half as much salt as the regular. It's 53 hours to have it here. It's 68 here. It's warm. I bought me some um some flower bulbs to plant. Yesterday. Maybe I'll plant them tomorrow. I got, I got some gladiolus. Purple gladiolus. And then I got a black charm lily, just a dark purple lily. I already have some, um, well, when Shaylin bought it for me originally, it was purple lily. Shaylin had bought me for Mother's Day and I planted it. But when it came back last year, it was pink. So we're going to see when I plant these. Do they come up purple like they're supposed to? Or are they going to change to pink? I do too, Lexi. It's my favorite flower. I love lilies. It's my favorite. Hey, Joe Alice. We're good. How are you? We love you back. So they're pretty. My papa has one of those, um, you know, the metal wire things. He has a, I think it's an old tire that's been cut, you know, to where it kind of looks like a flower. And then it's got, you know, soil and stuff in it. And there's plants growing out of it. Well, the plants, some of the plants that are growing out of it our morning glory. So the morning glory, you know, glow, grows up that wire. And once they start blooming, they're so pretty. 
every money every morning there's all those you know beautiful white flowers all over that little wire fence thing And then he has, I think it's some lavender that grows along the sidewalk. Little purple plants. They just stick straight up little, I think it's lavender. And he didn't plant it. It just appeared one day. And it started kind of, you know, going along the line. So he just left it. At the rent house down for me that I stayed in before I moved into my house. When I first moved there, you know, the yard was really in bad shape. And so I started, you know, cutting the yard and pulling up the weeds and all that stuff. All of a sudden, once I got, you know, the yard cleared out, all these um purple, I think they were lilies like purple, I think it was purple lilies, started just sprouting up. Like they were just growing by themselves. And I mean, they were all over the backyard. They were everywhere in the backyard. What it was, was the neighbor had them and, you know, she was growing them in her own yard. And I guess this kind of, kind of, you know, spread through the fence a little bit. Well, they went all over the backyard. Well, somehow they had gone from the backyard to right along the garage in this little dirt bed that was there. And they started sprouting up over there for me. It's gyoza. I just made gyoza. And um, I was like, before I move out of here, I'm gonna dig up some of them bulbs and I'm gonna take them with me. And then when I moved, I forgot all about it. And then the people that moved in after that, they never, do anything to the yard. They never, they barely cut the yard. They never grew again. I have not seen them anymore since. But I'm going to plant these because I already have those two. Well, it's one. But, you know, it sprouts out. Two or three lilies sprout from that bowl. So there's two or three pink lilies. And then I'm going to put I think I have I have eight of the lily bulbs. And 25 of the gladiolus. So I think I'm going to like, you know, it's kind of maybe do two gladioli bulbs and then a lily, two or three gladioli bulbs and then a lily just to go across the front of the house right here. You get fine if you don't cut your grass. There is a fine, but I think it has to get to an extreme level. Before they come out and give a warning. My neighbors on this side, they wait three, four, five, six months to cut grass. And then when they do, they use like a um like a tractor. And then they don't even clean it up after they do it. They just leave it, you know, I can't even call it grass anymore. At that point, it looks like hay just laying out there all in the street, all everywhere. And they haven't said anything to them about it. But 
to let me leave my trash can by the side of the road. You know, be knocking on the door. Move this trash can before you get a ticket. My patient. One of my patients that I had before I had to stop working. She was the same age as me. She had cancer. She um she liked to garden, like she grew flowers. She had a lot of um tulips and um mm, I can't remember what the other flower was. But both her front yard and backyard was just red, pink, yellow, and white flowers. And they were so beautiful. So beautiful. I'm done, y'all. Um, it might have been gladiolus. I can't remember. But I would go over there and... um. I would do like do her laundry for her and cook her breakfast. And then um help her in the yard sometimes. Like if she wanted to go outside and be in the yard, just go out there in the yard with her, talk to her, make sure she wasn't getting too tired, she wasn't gonna fall or anything like that. And we just chit chat and she'd play in the yard. She died um, about six months, I think, after I stopped working. Like she, her, her cancer, you know, came out of a mission, and all of a sudden, just took her. Like it was so fast. Like I'd had. You know, I had the first knee surgery that I had, and that's when I had to stop working. And I thought I was going to go back to work after I had the first knee surgery, just when they um, tightened the meniscus on my knee. You know, I was out for like six weeks, um, waiting for it to heal, going to therapy. Um, and then when the swelling finally all went down, that's when my knee dislocated again with the tightened meniscus that was supposed to keep it from dislocating, but then it wouldn't pop back like it always had before because now the meniscus was so tight, couldn't pop back in place. And that's when they put me in that straight out leg brace thing and I had to just sit there and suffer with a dislocated knee for like two weeks until it finally moved itself back into place. And then I had to have my knee replaced because that was just going to keep happening. And that was, that was the most painful thing. That was way more painful than having the replaced knee was just living with a dislocated knee. That is some horrible pain. Um, but during that first six weeks, she had called me and um, asked me to bring her something. Oh, she had brought me some, um, when I had my surgery, she had brought me some flowers from her yard in a vase. And I had the vase, so I had to, um, this came from, um, it's a gas station called On Cue. On cue. That's where I came from. Um, I went to take the vase back to her. And so I drove over there to take the vase back to her. And when I got over there, she was walking with a cane. And she wasn't looking too good. And I was like, what's going on? And she was like, I'm having to have treatments again. The cancer came back. And I was like, oh, no. And, um, yeah, she just went 
I think about three, four weeks later, she was gone. She was gone like three, four weeks later. It was so fast. And like I said, she was the same age as me. It was She was the same age as me. I had one that I had from the, um, about the fair. I buy me one from the fair and then right around breaks it. She always breaks my mugs when I get her to get me some tea. She'll go in there with an attitude sometimes and then, you know, won't be really holding on to it or she'll sit it on the edge of something and it falls to the floor, crashes and breaks open. So then I have to go buy another mug. I told her she's going to start buying my mugs because from on cue, I think they're 12 or 14. But when you get it from on cue, the one thing about them is when you get it, Inside the cup, there's coupons, and you can get, um, I think it's like five coupons in there for a free refill. But I don't drink soda, and I make my own tea at home. I don't really care for the tea that they have there. So other than going there and filling it up with ice, because they do have, you know, the ice, like Sonic Ice. So I could go in there and get me, you know, fill it up with ice for free if I want to do that. But you know, for someone who actually drinks, you know, soft drinks or whatever to fill up this thing and they give you five free. That's well worth the, you know, $14, $50 that you pay for the cup. But. Yeah, so this is. This is my first one this year. I have not had to buy another one this year. But whenever the um, fair was here, I can't remember what month the fair is. Is it like August or September? In August, September, I had, whenever the fair was here, I had one of these already. And I went to the fair. I bought the one that they had at the fair. So you go to the lemonade stands and they have them at the fair. And so I bought that one. I was using the one, the lemonade one, and she broke it within like a week of me getting that one. Then I went back to the one that I, of these that I already had. She broke it. So then I had to go buy this one. So now I still have this one. Um, at the fair... Say they're like 15 or 20 at the fair, depending on the booth that you go to. Because, you know, some on certain sides of the park, you know, stuff costs different prices. I figured that out year before last. If you are in the carnival area where the rides are, the stuff costs more in there. The food and snacks and stuff costs more by the rides than it does over by the livestock show and rodeo area. Stuff is cheaper on the opposite side. So if you're in by the rides, I think these were like $20, $19. But if you were over on the opposite side where people are just walking around, it's like 15. And then at the fair, you get the big old cup and they fill it full of their supposedly homemade iced tea, which is just some country time mix and some fresh squeezed lemons added to it. That's not homemade lemonade. <laughs> but, yeah. It's still good. It's full of ice and it's refreshing while you're walking around in a hundred degree weather, you know, at the at the carnival. And you get to keep the cup. Because they also they have the little cups, the smaller plastic like cups. They're about they're about this size, you know, and then they got that little funny looking straw that sticks out of it. And it's got the little snap on lid. They have those. And I think those are like $8 for those. And you get it, you know, full of the tea of the lemonade. Well, they do have tea stands too. You get tea or lemonade, depending on the stand you go to. Um, and it's got fresh lemons in it. And 
the smaller cup, the cup like this, I think is like $8. $8 by the rodeo side and maybe $10 in the carnival area. And then the big one was 15 versus 20. And then there was one more bigger than that, but I never found the booth that had the big one. They had one, they had a mug that was like this much taller and that much bigger around. But I never found that booth to even see how much that one was. I never found the booth that had those giant mugs. But there were people walking, and it had a it had a handle that like folded down like a like a bucket when you go to the um to the beach or whatever, like a sand bucket. It had one of those handles on it, like the sand bucket. Can I get you one of these or one from the fair? But yeah, if you um whichever one it is, if you cash at me the money for it, I'll get it for you. Um if it's the fair, I think the fair is in let me see. I think the fair here it comes here in like August or September. I know it's when it's hot. It's hot. September. It, the fair is here from September 12th to September 22nd. So yeah, I told you it was hot. <laughs> but um, yeah, so if you want the one from the fair, then it's in September and yeah, I can get it. If you just want one of these, then yeah, I can get it for you um, anytime. They're on queues up the street. It's on the corner. But yeah, if you want the one from the fair, that's in September. Leg is killing me right now. Oh my goodness. But I'm gonna go. I gotta go to Crest and get some of these for Lexi and Diva. So I'm gonna go to Crest and if they still have some of these, I'm gonna grab some of these. And Lexi, you said you wanted three of these, right? This one, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go get some of these. I'm gonna go get my ice, and then we may do the crab boil tonight for dinner. If so, I will be back on doing the crab boil, like making it. Because um, these are going to be gone. I already know. It's only that many of them left. And Rayon will eat them up. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to go get that. And I'm going to figure out what dinner is. If it's the crab boil, I will be back on and make my crab boil. I'm going to make the crab boil in this also. I'm going to make the crab boil in here. All right, I just seen the worst X Factor audition in my life. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> you auditioned for X Factor? No, no, I just seen it on YouTube. This guy. Oh, X Factor is a singing show. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was thinking about. What was that show called with the where you had to eat weird stuff? What no world? Something factor. Yeah, it's the Brit it's the British singing hopping to this yeah. guy wasn't even singing. He was, <laughs> he was yelling gibberish and cursing. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll get you one from um from on cue. I can get that one. They're around the corner. So yeah. That I can get anytime, yeah. Um they also have them at um well sometimes they have them at Circle K. But on cue always has them. But at Circle K, you only get that first fill. Like if you wanted to um, put a drink in it, like I said, I just always buy the cup. I don't put anything in it um, unless I just want some ice. But you get just you get a cup, and then you get that first fill free. And then I think when you go in afterwards, if you bring your cup in, you get a discount. Even at on cue, when you bring your cup into the on cue. You get it, you can refill it for less than what the normal charge is, which I have no clue how much it costs to fill this thing up. I have no clue at all. Um, I think the large normal cups are like $2 to fill up. So this is probably $4. That's probably three or $4 at least. So I guess if you're you know, since it's the on, you know, the name of the store that you're in, they give you a discount. You probably fill it up for two dollars or something instead. Hey, Sister D. Um, but yeah, I will get you one of those. I'm gonna go get them. It's Dallas Cowboy. If they still have them up there, I just got them. Either yesterday or day before yesterday. So hopefully they still have them. Fear Factor. Yeah, that was it. She came in talking about an, an um, audition. I'm like, they auditioned for Fear Factor. They were just eating weird stuff. <laughs> you volunteered for that. Yes, I will eat tarantulas. Pick me. <laughs> but. Yeah. My day was good. How was yours? I just got through making making and eating gyoza. And um, CBD oil. I'm still at work, dragging. And that's how it was for me yesterday. <laughs> I'm sure when y'all CBD oil, I'm not getting emails from CBD oil. But, yeah. We go up here, see if they still have these Ziplocs and get them for Lexi and Diva. I'm going to go get my ice. And then I'm going to decide if I'm going to do this crab oil tonight or not. I don't know because this is, if I can't make this stop hurting, I don't think so because I'm going to have to stretch out. I can't sit up hurting like this. This hurts. Yeah, the oil works. Um, I don't have a high enough um, dosage for... Bring your plate. I don't have a high... What? I don't have a high enough dosage to actually get rid of my pain. But what I have does work for my um, nerve damage because I did have to take um, 
Neurotin three times a day, Gabapentin three times a day for my nerve damage pain that I have. Um, and the CBD oil, I have no, no, um, yeah, I have some more sweet, so mm -hmm. I have no, um, nerve, nerve pain while I'm using it. Now, if I don't take it, it will come back. Oh, it will come back, so I have to take it, but. And I have the, um, the oil that I just put it in my tongue, but I also take the oil and I put it in my vape and I vape it in addition to what's under my tongue. So in here I have CBD oil in here. Well, <laughs> D, if I ever finally find a doctor who's actually there in the office so I can get my license, I will be able to get marijuana. Because right across the street from the on queue where I can get this from for Joe Alice is a dispensary. But... You got to have a license first. And I went to two different places that said they was open and there was nobody there. So they have online um, doctors that you can do, but they cost more than if you go to the office. But since ain't nobody ever at the office, I'm going to have to go. And do the online one, but I gotta get more money for that. But the online one, you have to pay like 200 and 225, 250 up front, and then they do your paperwork and stuff. When you go into the office, you just pay them, it's like either 100 to 150, and um. Then they send in the paperwork, and then when it's done, you pay the other hundred dollars or whatever it is, or your insurance will pay the other part. Um, for them to actually, you know, hand you the actual license and stuff. But yeah, if I can't find a doctor that's actually in the doggone office when it says open. I'm gonna have to pay the whole amount up front and not get the benefits of insurance helping me out. You know what I mean? And I was hoping for that, you know, insurance discount, but it don't seem like it's gonna happen because they ain't never there. They ain't never there. Ooh, that hurts, y'all. What is this? Oh. So I like this stuff so far, y'all. Showed y'all found that in the store the other day. And um, my friend uh, Roma, she lives in Washington. She uh, used to tell me about it all the time. And we never had it down here, but they had it in, um, where did I get this? At Winco. They had this at Winco. And it is. It's really good. It's really salty, though. So you have to be real careful when you're sprinkling that. Because it's way saltier than, like, Laurie's. Like, when I season, like, my chicken or anything with Laurie's, I can kind of, you know, do a dusting until I see it kind of turn red. You don't want to do that with Johnny's. Johnny's is salty. But it's good. Like, that just means you don't need a lot. It's on there. You don't need a lot. <laughs> yep, it is good on fried chicken. That's what I made um day before yesterday. I made fried chicken. I put the um I put the Johnny's on it and I put Sazon on it. 
and that was some good chicken, y'all. I seasoned it with the um, stuff first, and I put it in the fridge, and I let it sit there and marinate in the buttermilk and the seasonings. And then I battered it and fried it. That was some good chicken, y'all. Rayon came in here asked me today if she could have the rest of the, of the spicy chicken because mine was spicy and theirs was not. And I was like, what rest of the what spicy chicken? She's like, oh, well, I saw some yesterday. I was like, I ate that last night. That was my dinner. <laughs> Ain't no more. I had two little wings. Came here asking for my two little wings this morning. Girl, I ate those wings for dinner. <laughs> My hip is starting to calm down. The benefit of the vape versus the oil is this works immediate. Like this is immediate relief. This is delayed relief, but once it's in your system, it stays for, um, I think she said four to five days. So this stays for a long period of time, but this works immediately. So you, you vape, it goes into your system. It immediately starts giving you some relief from whatever is bothering you, but it doesn't last long. That takes a while to kick in. It'll take, you know, three, four hours before it starts doing anything. But once it's in there, it stays in there. So that's why she said it's good to do both. but I do need stronger. Um, Casey Diva was telling me yesterday that she went um, at the, um, was it a flea market she went to yesterday? I think, she went to, I think it was a flea market, either flea market or swap meet that she went to yesterday. There was a guy there and she said he had, um, he had CBD oil. And I think she said it was 3,000 milligrams. Like, this is only 600. But she, I think she said he had 3,000. And it was for, um, she said 100 and, I think she said 120 or something. But she had um, actually talked him down. I think she told him she'd give him $100 and he had to throw in a vape or something. And he told her, okay. <laughs> Um, she said she was going to go back and get it. But, yeah, this was. I think this was 125. Because I bought two of these. One's for me and one's for Mark. Mark's is sitting over there. I got to mail that out. But I got mine. This was 50. That was 50. And then this was a hundred. I think this was 135. Because I spent about $250. Because I also got some gummies that day to try the gummies. Because I spent about $250 that day. So 3000 for $100? Heck yeah. Because this wasn't the 600. 3,000, how you feeling good? I bet. I bought it from... Um, can't help. We have these like every other corner now in Oklahoma. Like There's so many of these. There it goes. Can't help. And 
and then she gives you, uh, give me these cards. This is a referral card. If I knew anybody that was here and they put my information on here, um, your the people that you refer get a 10% discount. And then I would receive a $5 wellness book. But I don't know anybody in Oklahoma, so I don't really have anybody to give these to. But yeah. If I knew people. You get the people that you refer, they get a discount, and then you get a wellness book. And then it says you can combine up to 25 wellness books on any of your purchases. But, yeah, once I'm able to actually get my license, then I could go to any of the... Um, the dispensaries that they have popping up. Like I said, we have one right here at the corner. There's a dispensary. And in there, you know, they got the edibles, they got actual, you know, marijuana. And then they have, you know, oils and all that stuff. Actually, in here, she had some, um, she had some actual marijuana back behind the counter on the wall. They actually had some in there. Just, you know, not as much as if you walk into a dispensary. I went into one of the dispensaries just to find um, to find out, you know, what doctor I could go to. And that's where I got, you know, the addresses for the two places that I did go. And they wasn't there. <laughs> but you open that door and I mean, it's the smell is strong in there and it's not they're not in there smoking or anything it's just all of it in there but yeah now this cbd oil the first one that i bought from them was um 250 milligram and now this is the strongest one that they had, I believe, up there at the store. So this one's 600. So this one still, it works for, like I said, my nerve um, pain, my neuropathy. But it doesn't do much for actual pain. Um, it will lower it just a little bit. But it's still, you know, I'm still in pain. Um but the first one that I got, the 250, it just tasted like, what kind of oil was that one made out of? I think that one was made out of sunflower oil. It tasted like sunflower oil. Like it had a, kind of a burnt sunflower oil taste. Um, this one, this one tastes like weed. <laughs> it, it, it tastes the way weed smells. It doesn't really have a smell, but this one tastes like weed smells. which is not good. But I don't know if that's because it's stronger or if it's just this particular company. Because this is not the same company that they originally were using. They switched companies. And she said this was a better, a better company. This one's premium hemp oil. And this one is using, see the oil itself is a hemp oil. This is MCT 
medium chain triglyceride oil. And then hemp extract is added to that. The other one like literally said sesame oil. And then they added, you know, hemp extract to the sesame oil. So this is more, you know, hemp on top of hemp on top of hemp. <clears throat> what you doing? Shay. She's always outside my window. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I saw any of these shops in Houston, but they do have the website and you can go order it from the website. The canhelp.com, can-help.com. Because, yeah, if you forget to take the oil or you run out of oil, yeah, all them fire ants start going, that lightning starts shooting, all of it comes back. I remember when um, I first got injured and I had to start taking the gabapentin, I didn't think it was doing anything because I was in, I was still in pain, you know? So I was like, what am I taking this for? This is stupid. Like, I'm just taking pills just to be taking pills. So I, I didn't take them. I quit taking them. I quit taking those pills. Like, I missed my more. I didn't take the morning dose. And then I didn't take the afternoon dose. All of a sudden, those fire ants started crawling up and down my legs. And then the pain started shooting. I was like, okay, it works. It works. It does work. So that's what it's doing. That's what is stopping. It just stops for the nerve stuff. It didn't, you know, do anything for pain, pain, but it gets rid of that nerve stuff. And that nerve stuff is a whole nother level of pain on its own. So it's like, okay, I'll, I'll keep taking the gabapentin to get rid of that. But since I've been using the CBD, I have not taken gabapentin. And that was um, June last year. Vance came here in June and um, we went over to the, uh, to the can help shop and I got the oil and I got some of the balm, some of the balm and some of the oil and I put the oil on my tongue and then I rub my legs down with, the, with my leg down with the balm and my back, my back and went to the mall. Cause I said before he loves shopping. So we went to the mall and we walked that whole mall, both floors. We walked that entire mall and I was fine. Like there was no fire ants crawling up and down. There was no lightning striking up and down my leg. Like, I was fine. And I was like, okay, this works. I still had pain. Don't get me wrong. My back hurt. My knee hurt. But it was just the pain, the normal pain. I can deal with pain. I can ignore pain. I have a high, you know, threshold for pain. So that nerve stuff is a whole other level of uh, I, I can't, I can't hang. I can't deal. It just makes it, it ups it to a level that's just not tolerable. But yeah, I was like, okay, this works. So since then, I have not taken gabapentin. I haven't taken anything since then. Other than when I go up there and I'm sick and they keep giving me freaking steroids. But yeah. See, I wonder if the gabapentin was what was making my migraines increase. Because I'm pretty sure it was after I started taking the gabapentin 
that I had to get my doctor to give me. Um, I can't remember the name of the pill that I was taking for my migraines, but she had to put me on a pill to try and stop the migraines because I had a constant migraine every day. Like it was not going away. And so she put me on another pill to stop the migraines. And I haven't taken that either. Since I haven't taken the um, gabapentin, I haven't taken that pill that I was taking for the um, migraines either. I can't remember what it was called. Something with a C. Something with a C. Someone over the, wow. I didn't even know you could overdose on gabapentin. I just know I didn't like it. Because it blocks all nerve feelings. Like it's not just, you know, it don't only block the nerve feeling that you don't want to feel. It blocks what you do want to feel. I didn't like that. But now I do wonder if that's what increased my migraines. Because they did. It had gotten, you know, I've had migraines since I was in high school. But not constantly every single day. Like I had, I've always had like, you know, seasonal migraines. Like they go along, kind of goes along with my allergies a lot. But it had gotten, like it was just seriously all day, every day, constant migraine. And normally I could take um, naproxen or take a couple of naproxen and I could make, a mig make my migraine, you know, lower it wouldn't go away completely but it would lower down and it wouldn't even like the naproxen wouldn't even do it like it was like mm -mm, nope you're gonna keep this migraine but since i've been using cbd i'm back to just when i get a migraine i can take my naproxen and it'll lower it on down and it, it like it lowers it to a level that's tolerable and it's, I guess it's tolerable long enough for it to go ahead and go away. Because then I'm able to relax and calm down or whatever. So then, you know, it's not like making it worse, I guess. I had to buy, I bought two shirts yesterday, two black shirts, because when I got to work, I realized I had to wear a black shirt instead of our normal uniform, which is a white shirt. And I didn't have a black shirt, so I bought two different black shirts yesterday. So I wasn't sure which one was going to work. So now I have two black shirts. But that's okay because if it keeps scheduling me to do makeup stuff, the makeup companies seem to be the companies that want you to put on a black shirt. And like my, in the last two months, I've done three makeup events, so.
That's the only thing about my job is we don't really know exactly like we know what we're doing before we get there because you can look in your um in your schedule and it gives you a title like it tells you a title of what you're doing and you can go in if you want to and you can actually pull up the paperwork and look at it to see you know what exactly it is but you know most people don't do that so a lot of times, you know, people will get to work because what we do is we go to we go into, you know, whatever store we're working, if it's Walmart or Target or whatever, you go to the back where they keep um, the, our carts and stuff and we get boxes are sh for us are shipped into the different stores. And so you go find the box that you're supposed to be using. You look up the number on the paperwork and you find the box that has that number on it and then you open the box and you pull the paperwork out of the box. And then the paperwork tells you what you're doing today. Well, it also tells you for certain companies what they want you to put on. So if it's not their, um, you know, our normal uniform, which is what we wear is black pants, black shoes, and a white button down shirt. So you can walk in there sometimes and open it up and it'll say, you know, it's always, always where it's always usually still, you know, your black pants and your black shoes, but you go in there like yesterday and open it up and it says, wear a black shirt for this event. And you're standing there wearing a white shirt. You know what I mean? Um, I do marketing. I do like, um, like the, if you go to Sam's, you know how they're giving out the samples and stuff in Sam's. I do that. But I do it in um, Walmart and Target. You know, most of the time I'm doing food, but sometimes it's other stuff. I'm sitting here pulling guinea pig hair out of my clothes, y'all. There's guinea pig hair everywhere all the time. And hair itches me. So I'm always hunting for hair. And that's why Shaylin drives me crazy because she always wants to come and sit a guinea pig on me. You know, it's like I, I like to wear certain things or I'm going to touch a guinea pig because it's going to be something I'm going to take back off because it's going to be full of guinea pig hair. And she'll come, you know, once I've already taken my shower, I'm ready for bed. She'll come put a guinea pig on me in my gown. No, I don't want a guinea pig in my gown. No, the people that work for, that give out samples, don't work for the stores. Usually. Now, in Sam's, those people that are doing sushi... That's a whole other part of people. They might actually be the people that work for Sam's, those sushi people. Unless it's like a, a separate sushi vendor. Um, but no, those people that are like in Sam's, those people work for. Um, oh, what's the name of the company? It used to be my company, but it's not my company anymore. They were bought out by, um, I think it's ConAgra. I think either Conagra or contingent, but um, yeah, they work for that company, but at Sam's they're what they do is a whole lot easier than what we do. Um, Cause there was a lot of people that work, you know, like I do at Walmart and um, target that were wanting to switch to Sam's cause the people at Sam's were making more money than we do. And at Sam's, all they do is they walk in the store, they go back into the back where the offices are, and all their carts are sitting outside the manager's office because they have managers that actually work there in that in, in Sam's. 
and their carts are already sitting there. All their stuff has already been bought for them. And all they do is go push the cart out to the floor and give away whatever they have and then go push it back and they go home. And they made more money than us. Like they made a lot more money than we do. Um, but for us, like what I do, I have two corporate credit cards. When I have to go to Target or Walmart, well, at Target, at Target, you actually don't have to go and buy anything. You go get all your stuff, but you have to write all your stuff down, which is really irritating. You have to write all your stuff down on a piece of paper. And at the end of the day, when you're done, you just turn the paper into the manager and then they just take it out of the system. Like we don't actually have to use our cards when we go to Target. But at Walmart, I, you know, go in, I open my box and see what I'm doing, put my card out on the floor. Then I take my paperwork and my paperwork has grocery lists on it. I go through the store. I have to go shopping in the store, buy all my stuff, you know, bring it back to my cart, put it in the, you know, freezer, fridge, whatever it is. Um, I have to go get all my equipment. I have to wash and sanitize all my equipment. I have to fix whatever it is that I'm fixing. You know, Sam's, they all, they usually pretty much always do like ready-made stuff. They just warm stuff up or slice something up and that's, they just, they're giving out samples of what's usually pretty much already done for them. Sometimes I'm cooking whole stuff. Like I have made gingerbread cookies from scratch in Walmart, standing at one of those carts. I have made steaks. I have made a whole ham. I have, I've made a lot of stuff standing at that cart in Walmart. Okay. Um, but it sounds like they just have it way easier, you know, um, Every four hours, we have to take all our stuff back to the back, wash and sanitize everything again, bring it all back out again, start cooking again. Um, at the end of the day, you got to take it back, wash, sanitize all your stuff again, put everything away, go put all your stuff back in the back where our stuff belongs, make sure everything is clean and tidy because we're there by ourselves. We don't have a manager in the store. Like It's just us. We have no one there in that store but us. You work for yourself, by yourself. It's just you. Do your job. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, and depending on what you're doing, it might be a lot that you have to do. You know, sometimes it's, bare, you know, it's not much that you have to do, but sometimes it's a lot. Let me show you yesterday. So yesterday was an easy day because I wasn't cooking. It was boring. But my setup was a lot. Yesterday I did makeup. I'm going to show you my cart from yesterday. I did um, L'Oreal Color Match makeup yesterday. Do you see all this? This is Every single shade of foundation that Color Match has, every single shade is up here, and it's up here in order of the shade. This is every single shade of powder up here. This is all of the um, concealers right here. On my desk, that's every single shade on top that I was letting people look, trying to find their, their um, actual color for them. And then I was making them little samples in little sample bottles. Like this was what I did yesterday. It's a lot. It's a lot. And then when you finish, think about it. I had to go put all of these back one by one, exactly where they belonged back in the racks, in the shelves, in the little sliders or whatever, put them all back where they belong. Every single one of them. Then break down my whole cart, take all this stuff off, throw all this stuff away, put this stuff back under my cart where it belongs, and then take my cart back to the back of the building and put my cart away neatly.
you know, this was the other day. This was a very, very simple day. Very simple day. The deli in Walmart Ooh. now has the Totino's pizza rolls in these little mini boxes. I just had to keep going to the deli, getting them to give me, um, they told me I could only buy 30 pizza rolls at a time. I was supposed to buy 30 pizza rolls 10 times. Okay. I had to go get 30 pizza rolls. Then I put them in my oven. This is my oven right here. Cooked them in my oven. And then I would put them out here to give to people when they were warm. You know, when people were supposed to get when people walked up. But nobody was walking up because I didn't have anything sitting out. So I started putting, you know, a few out at a time so they could see that I had something. And then that gets customers to come over. When you have an empty counter, they figure you haven't finished cooking yet. So they don't even walk in your direction. Um, so this is an easier day. I just had to clean my pan that's in here. I had to sanitize the pan that's in here and, you know, sanitize my counter, clean my counter off, sanitize that. When I was done, took this, put that back on the shelf in my, in my back area, put my cart in front and I was done. Throw that away, throw the sign away. So that's a, you know, that's an easier day. Here's the day I have coffee down here and I have cereal up here. So I had three, I had coffee pots. Then this, I had this coffee pot. It was broken. I ended up having two coffee pots up here. You can see, but there's a red one here and a black one here. Cause the first one was pouring coffee all over everything. You have to make sure everything is neat, lined up. Everything goes together, you know. And again, you just, this is your whole, everything you do is in that little bitty, you know, area here. No matter what you're doing, you got to figure out how to get it all done in that little limited spot. This was when I did toothpaste. About a week or two ago, I had to build all those boxes. This box here, uh -oh. this box here took forever to put together. You don't necessarily have a time limit, but you're supposed to be, they want, they really want you set up within like 45 minutes. But um, sometimes that's just impossible. Um, but you're there by yourself anyway. So who's going to come tell you, you, you know, you're, you're 10 minutes late. Hurry up. There's no, you're, you're by yourself. So you just do what you got to do. Here's the day of me doing lemons and oranges and clementines. And uh, a kombucha drink. Trying to see if I can find some of the pictures of stuff that I have fixed. I've actually cooked. So I had to make that gingerbread house while sitting at the cart. I had a day when I was doing gingerbread houses and eggnog. So all day long, I made gingerbread houses and served eggnog at the cart. Oh, so here's my um, lilies that I told you go in my yard. When Shaylin bought me, bought them for me, they were in a little planter that I had here on my counter, and they were purple. When I planted them in the yard, that's what color they come back as. That's the color they come back. They were purple when I got them. So I don't know if... The ones that I was given, like maybe they put some dye in the water and made them look purple. 
But when they started growing back, when I planted them, they're pink. This is a fruit salad that I made standing at my cart. I made that at my cart, fruit salad. This is a little brioche type thing that I made at my cart. It's a baguette that I had to like, you had to buy a whole, you know, baguette loaf, slice it up, toast it. It had cream cheese and these berries, and then they're drizzled with balsamic vinegar. That's made at my cart. These are chocolate covered strawberries made at my cart. That's all the ones that I really have in here. I've done quesadillas, I've done like pinwheel type roll up tortilla sandwiches things, little mini subs. I've done all kinds of stuff just standing at that cart. Apple nachos, that's at work. I think I made those at work and then I made them for the kids at home too. I think that was a picture of some that I actually made at home. This right here, I was doing Coke, this is around the holidays. You see those tags that are on the Coke? In addition to setting up my cart, I had to also, they gave me like, it was like 400 of those tags, which I had to put those tags together myself, like tie a ribbon into all those tags and make them into tags that hang and then fold them and then go and put them on every bottle of Coke on the shelves in the store. In addition to making this Coca-Cola holiday punch. And I did that event two or three times in one week. That was the most irritating thing ever. Making all those things. This was a, a plum. I had to brown a plum in my, my skillet. And then it's got, it's on, there's a club cracker spread with cream cheese and then there's bacon jam. And then you put the warm plum on top. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff at work, Joalice. This is a cracker, cream cheese, bacon jam, and a hot plum. I 
This was apricots and cheese. This was a very strange event. Dried apricot and cheese. Queso fresco. Oh, this is the day that I made a whole ham. You don't want to focus. But in those little cups on the far side, there's slices of ham. I cooked the whole ham. And then this was, I don't know, remember if it was chocolate cake or gingerbread cake or something like that. But yeah, so in this little oven, I cooked the whole ham, then the slices are up here in this pan on top. If I had the startup money and the clientele here, I would cater. But I don't know people here in Oklahoma. Now, when I was in Texas, in my house, when I had my house in East Texas, I did cook. I um, had people that bought desserts from me all the time. And at my job, I actually um, would tell people what meals that I was making for dinner. And I had people that bought plates from me. Um, just the dinners that I was bringing for myself for dinner, people started, you know, requesting to buy dinner. And so I had people that would, you know, buy meals for me every day. But here, I don't know anybody here. So I don't know anybody here in Oklahoma. And I don't go anywhere, you know, so. It just makes it a little more difficult. But I do want to, like, um, if I can figure it out, like, shipping costs and all that stuff, I would... Um, start, you know, trying to like sell cakes, you know, pound cakes and stuff like that, that I could ship out. For people that don't live here, because I know people on YouTube <laughs> and I know people on Facebook, but you know, I just don't know about it here. Only person I know is here is MK Bites. But I've cooked for my church before during vacation Bible school. I did the cooking for the kids.
Um, we've mentioned it before, but we still haven't ever actually done anything yet. And I do have a food license. There's my food. Because in order to do my job, you do have to have a food license. Um, at Sam's, they don't. And I think that's why the manager does all the prep and all that stuff. But yeah, doing that job, I have had, um, you get really nice people that come up that want samples. You get some really rude people that want samples. And I always think it's so funny when um, you get the rude people because they try and insult you and the insults that they're trying to say actually have nothing to do with you. <laughs> Because it'll be, you know, you get the people be like, up here with her Walmart job, blah, 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 blah. I don't work for Walmart. You know. Okay. I'm getting ready to get off. Because I'm getting ready to run up here to the store, see if they still have these um, Dallas Cowboy bags for um, Diva and. Lexi, and I'm going to go get my ice because this ain't working for me. I need ice. So, yeah, I might be back, though, because I still have to decide if we're having the crab boil tonight or not. We probably will because I didn't take anything else out to fix. So, unless I go get some fish. We'll see what they have at Crest. If they have some good looking fish that's not frozen that I can cook, we might have fish for dinner. Welcome. Hola, como esta? Ni hao. Don't say why. Squeak, 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 squeak. Anyway, so I'm going to get off here, y'all. I need to use the restroom and I need to go to the store. So I'm going to go. I will see y'all later. Thank you for watching. <laughs> and I may be back. If I do the crab ball, I will be back tonight. So, yeah. I don't know where my mouse is. I cannot quit thinking about the horrible audition. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> I actually have no clue where my mouse is. Well, it happens. Is it on the floor? Time you lost your phone. Is it on the floor around? No. Where is my mouse? The rat tail cone was. There it is, behind me. All right. So, yeah, thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. 
Um, you can leave some comments if you have some suggestions or some requests of stuff that you would like for me to cook. Um, I do have a uh, red velvet cake that I have to make for someone that did request that. So I will be doing that. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go. And I may be back later, depending on if we do the crab oil or not. So y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs>